Hello there, last day of the year 2015. I want to check my uh, boxes with Prosopocoelus uh, Giraffa K is OK. I think I have to change um, the substrate because now after five months you can see the kimchi is now mostly converted into kind of a soil material and also what you can see it is a little bit more um, wet than originally when we started uh, the breeding process. If you want to then just go back in the playlist to see our last um, film in the playlist about Protopocoelus giraffa. So let's have a look. Here we see from outside that there is a larva uh, waiting down here so I have to carefully dig out the material so that this, this thing on the top this seems pretty dry and uh, not completely eaten so this material you can either use uh, to supplement it in the in the new box that you prepare for the larva or you can use it of course for rose chevers and also for dynasty beetles so this larva went down oh, it's here in that part of the of the box so let's see how big it is oh, okay If you go back, you will see that the kimchi that we had here for this nice larva is made from from a special strain of an oyster mushroom, from the famous flamingo oyster mushroom. It's called flamingo. Why? Because it has a, a reddish or rose touch here. That's a dried specimen that came out of one of these boxes. But as you can see, this is, uh, has a slightly pink touched uh, mushroom and originally when it comes out very fresh it's really quite dark pink nice mushroom also to eat it's an edible one as most of the oyster mushrooms so here's the larva so could be that it's already a little bit in the pre pupa stage now so probably good that we uh, change it now into another uh, box and I don't think that I will use the glass jar now anymore because it's probably better to present it one of these five liter boxes as I already said the material is here now a little bit uh, wet but probably for the bottom and then I can adjust some of the materials from a fresh kimchi this one because if the larva still wants to eat, that's now not a problem with this material here. And then also I can compress it a little bit. And I have here some more of this kimchi material that is completely dried up. So that's probably a good idea to make a little mixture so that the substrate is not getting too wet here. In the end of the cycle of this nice and big Prosopocoelus species, the biggest one actually uh, in the row of subspecies of Prosopocoelus giraffa. Okay, it's okay. So, I think this is okay. Now it has a little some dry spots here. And of course pay attention that there are no earthworms in this kind of substrate. This is really bad for most of the of the stag beetles as soon as they have pupated the earthworms come into the pupal chamber and if they can destroy it mostly the animals are lost so let's put it in here for the last time of the development process i would guess that in one or two months we can see an adult beetle here so i will go through all of my boxes now that I see here except of course with the boxes that I already uh, see that they are in pre pupal stage like for, um, for example here this is very clearly to see that it is all already a pre pupa larva in here so I won't uh, disturb this animal anymore but what I can do here to let it dry out a little bit better 
just that I take out the upper part of the substrate because it's quite deep down here in the substrate, the pupil chamber. And then I let it open, but of course I have to control then uh, from time to time whether it already came out or it already pupated. So that would be a, a good idea to wait with this larva. So let's see for another one, this one here. Here I don't see anything from outside, but there are some traces that the larva went through the substrate here. But from outside I don't see anything. So let's see what we can find here. If there is a, still a larva in here. Usually you can see the larvas from outside. And uh, only sometimes when they have already pupated. Or very rarely you, don't, you can not see it from outside what happens in a glass jar. So that's the case here, we don't see anything. Now we have to dig down a little bit to come deeper into the substrate. And um, yes, it, it gets wetter and wetter the more we come down into the substrate here. Of course, can be sometimes also that a larva dies. In the sub this substrate looks pretty good here. It's also, as you see, it's not fresh anymore because the fresh substrate from Kinchi looks like this one. So it changes the color a lot and is a kind of a fermentation process. And it, that means also fermentation. It should not be a stinky thing because um, the bad odors they exist in the moment when there's an anaerobe process going on and but this seems to be an empty glass jar or I forgot to put in a lot of when I originally started it so it's an empty if it's an empty one we can Use the whole material for breeding of uh, rose chevers or dynasty beetles. So that's what as that what I was expecting. That there is nothing in here because otherwise, as I already said, we would have seen traces from outside. Like for example here, you know, this is a clear thing here. But here I don't know whether it's already started doing something look the it goes from here to here and um, I think I will present to this big larva also now another box why because it's all also very wet here the material that's a bit too wet for the pupil uh, phase because normally if you go into pupation pay attention that the substrate is slightly drier than in the normal stages before when the larva was eating because this is really dangerous if it's too wet so where is she this big larva oh here is one part of it I see already oh, this is a nice one here but I also think that we could give this larva another another box of kimchi so that he uh, can finish the process of like this, I'll take this box, put in some fresh kimchi. Fresh kimchi here. Then, of course, I compress the whole thing. This is good munchy for them. And then I add some of the dry material on top. And if there are no earthworms in the substrate, as I told you already you can also add a little bit of the old substrate where the larva originally was living in so that she can smell that it's a place where she already was it smelled familiar to them and here on top 
I put some pretty dry material because I want the whole substrate not to be too wet here. You see from the dust here <laughs> coming out of this dry kimchi that it really has not enough, not much water in it. And then of course you can put the nice and big lava in here. Let's see how heavy this is. Must be around 25 grams, I would say. Yeah, exactly 25 grams. So this is not a really big one. They can get up to 50 grams at double the size that you see here. So this is the second box with a nice and big larva. So let's go on. We have some more of these uh, glass jars, like for example here. But here I also don't see anything from outside. So let's see whether we have the same wonder like just before when we just... Oh, here, no, here, oh. Here already an animal. An adult in but I'm too late this is already a long time out so we missed the right moment to go and see what happened whether it's already had an adult and it was on top here waiting for somebody who opens the box but from top you see that if the material has a structure like this this comes from the earthworms this small particles here is the excrements of earthworms here so that you can expect that there are earthworms in the substrate like this so, but we have here already a lot of earthworms so we don't care a little lot about this yes it's with completely filled with earthworms and this is per oh, but this is a nice uh, a nice normal Let's see how heavy it is. This is 32 grams. This is a pretty big one. What we do, we make a complete new box for it. Because I want to be absolutely sure that there are no first ones in this box then. But of course it's luxury to prepare the Kimchi boxes like this with so much of nice kimchi from Pleurotus chamor or Pleurotus salmoneus tramineus. This is this pink mushroom, and then I put some of the dry material on the top here, and then I think that's it for the moment. So we have checked through most or a lot of the boxes with a gear offer. So, and then of course now I have to write all the labels for the boxes again very seriously so that later on I know what is in the boxes and that we have to come back here in around, I would say three months around March, they should come out here. Thanks for watching.